So, again, you know, I can't now start the talk without mentioning what the talk is about. You know, but it's about traffic law. <laughs> so, again, you know, just reintroducing myself. My name is Aditya, and I have this weird title, uh, I think on the only title in Rapid Technologies, called Engineer Founder, Traffic Cloud. I'm not the company founder, so you know, different kind of founder. <laughs> anyway, so since last three years, I've been working on Traffic Cloud, and uh, I like to think we are very good at you know, this particular thing, but you'd be the judge of that. <clears throat> so just to give you some context, you know, what uh, what is the scale of our operations currently? So for last three years, we are roughly growing at 12% a month, okay, in all terms, and we are doing like hundreds of millions of requests on our whole cluster with hundreds of servers, you know. Most of these are hosted with AWS uh, virtual machines, and some of these are bare metal machines. Uh, some of these machines are also on vendors that you would not uh, be aware, aware of. And again, you know, we're running thousands of sites. And that was very easy, to, easy for us to predict, right? Because when we started three years ago, it was very simple for us to say, hey, you know, we want to build a very simple tool that lets people create sites whenever they want to, just like the tool we had for Yarp Next, without, you know, support overhead, so a low-cost site. And so obviously, you know, we want, wanted to have more sites running on our, on our servers. So this growth was kind of expected. What was not expected, however, was what came after it, which was benches and apps, right? So we thought maybe, you know, maybe we'll be running 10 apps, tops, right, you know, ARP Next, uh, some apps here and there, some third-party apps which are popular at that time, and that is the end of it, right? And then maybe, you know, we'll be running a couple of benches, you know, version 12, version 13, and that is the end of it, right? But, like, we were wrong, like, phenomenally wrong. Uh, and, and most of what is powered, I mean, most of the, I mean, cool stuff that is in Traffic Cloud, is because of these changes. Otherwise, we'll be just the same as ERPNX.com. So like, thanks for everyone who's making this possible. And again, you know, this is, I mean, powered by developers, uh, either, you know, third party, or even the people who have left our teams and went ahead and created their own small, uh, small teams, and partners specifically, and some of our engineers, you know, who just insist on having auto-deploy. So every commit is basically a deploy. Anyway, so the first question, right, and or roughly the, the, the first three questions you know, people ask me is about, hey, you know, which plan do I choose on Traffic Cloud, right? Do I go with $25 plan or 100 or 10 or, you know, what is the difference, right? Other than obviously I have to pay more for a bigger plan. And, or, or some variation of this question, right? So they're just asking me to explain the pricing. And if you go to the pricing page, you know, it is very straightforward, you know, you start with $10 and 25 and 15, 100 and so on. Like the amount you have to pay is very, very simple, right? It is no, it is just like calculation, right? And this was inspired by, essentially, because we like DigitalOcean a lot. Uh, and DigitalOcean had this amazing pricing, you know? You just pay $5 for a machine, or sometimes $40 for a machine, and that is the end of it. You don't pay for bandwidth, you don't pay for excess disk, or any other weird thing, right? And that is what we model our, price, model our pricing on. Very simple, flat pricing, predictable. But then, the problem is, you can't actually get a virtual machine for $5. So what we did was we bought bigger machines and gave people smaller chunks of those machines. Right? So it works very well as long as what you really want is just a site that uh, is up some of the time. You know, you're not running production quality sites or very busy sites. And later we added, because, because of benches and apps, you know, we had features that, uh, that required custom benches, private benches. And then, you know, once you have benches, people are like, oh, hey, you know, my app just broke. Let me search and execute a command and fix my site. And then we had these complicated features, you know, that required more and more compute than the, what we initially had planned. So the idea was, you know, we just added a paywall, you know. The feature is available to you after you start paying a certain amount. And this is per site, right? So for every site, no matter how busy it is, you have to pay, or how useless it is, you still have to pay us $10. So I'm here to make two announcements. So this is the first announcement. Is uh, the more and more I talk with uh, everyone, everyone inside our company, outside our company, the idea is basically they want more control. 
They're like, you know, we went from sites to ventures. Now give us servers. And that is exactly what we are going to do, right? Uh, and again, you know, this technology is not new, right? We've been doing this for two years now, you know, that provision servers automatically. All we are doing is just putting the same familiar dashboard so that you can provision your own servers on Profit Cloud. That's it. The underlying technology is the same. And all you have to do is select a region where you want to place your server. And currently, we do host, our, host all our servers on AWS. And then, basically, you have to pick a size for your virtual machine or server. And then, you have to pick two, two servers, an application server and database server. And then, again, you can decide, you know, maybe your, your specific case requires more power for reporting. Then, you can choose your sizing accordingly. So very straightforward. And then, you know, if you want more disk later, you can always, instead of just doubling, you know, instead of, instead of moving from $25 to $50, you can just increase your disk size. So we are moving to more and more control. You know, instead of having flat pricing, we are giving people more levers to pull and get the exact configs that they want. And again, you know, we are now promising a, like a very specific instance to you that at $100 a month, for instance, we'll be giving C6i large instance. And again, you know, this is for Mumbai region. The AWS pricing varies a little bit, 20-30% depending on which region you're on. But you'll be seeing similar pricing within your region. And then you choose a database server. So this combo essentially is what, what you get. And this is what you pay for. So because now you're paying for hardware, so this is just a sample of one of our servers we are running underneath. Now you don't have to pay for sites, and you don't have to pay for benches. What that means is, once you buy, say, a $100 machine, there is virtually no limit on how many sites you can run on that, on that infra, as long as you, are, you, know, you don't want uh, a different kind of performance. You can run sites, and then you can, have, you can define your own performance characteristics, and everything fits. So the minimum plan does go from $10 a month to $25 a month, right? But then now you can put more sites on the $25 a month machine. And by the way, now everybody gets a private bench. And everybody gets access to all the powerful features that we had with private benches, which is, which is as such, and applications, uh, custom applications, and your own deployments. <laughs> so again, you know, this dashboard is not the cool part, right? What is cool, however, is for the last three years, you know, we have built, I mean, we have put an immense amount of en energy and a lot of engineering into making Frappe Cloud work for us, as in the developers who are running Frappe Cloud, right? Because we had to give you certain guarantees, you know, that your sites will be up most of the time. And so, so we had monitoring and logging infrastructure set up, right? And for some reason, you know, we, we were not able to expose that infrastructure to you because you actually would not benefit from that infra because you are only getting a small chunk of a machine, not the entire machine. We are in charge of the machine, right? So now, however, because you know you are getting the whole machine, all of the monitoring and logging tech that is already there on Fabric Cloud, we can make available to you. Uh, and all of it is already implemented. You know, only difference is now we just have to go and make the user interface, which again, you know, like our engineers are very good at. Like not me, but you know, for instance, Hussein. Anyway, so again, you know, all of this is about control, right? And then th these are just list of some features that are already there, right? And maybe some of you had talked to us, you know, maybe they wanted to debug a specific case, specific problem, and then we were using these features underneath to solve your problem for you. But now that you're running, you'll be running your own virtual machines, this will be available to you at just a standard API. So essentially, now Frappe Cloud instance is, you know, because it is powered by a special, I mean, a virtual machine it is as good as any virtual machine you'll be getting anywhere else. So, you know, you don't have to compromise anything when you decide to come uh, and, you know, migrate your sites to Fabric Cloud, which was not the case before, you know, because you had so many controls on apps and uh, sometimes you didn't even get the performance you wanted. And then, you know, like, because so many things are already happening with Fabric Cloud, all of our sites, you know, and even, you know, like Vishal mentioned, like, you know, even Fast United sites, uh, some of our other org sites are also running on Fabric Cloud, all of our websites. Uh, obvious exception is Fabric Cloud, you know, because apparently you can't run Fabric Cloud on Fabric Cloud. And 
you know, even the, you know, where is blasphemous Alan, right? No cloud, right? Like, even, even he goes and installs fabbooks.com on Fabric Cloud. Anyway, so much money you're getting, man. <coughs> All right, so the second announcement is this, right? So because Fabric Cloud is essentially the successor of Central, right? The tool that we, are, that we were using to power erpnex.com subscriptions and sites. And in some ways, it is like much better. And you know, plus, you get to have the users get to have control, you know, not just the engineers who are operating, operating the system. So when I came for the first conference, roughly four years ago, there was a big fight going on. You know, and I see some faces here that were in the same conference. And the fight was about, essentially, we had promised to make Central open source. And uh, then you know, we reneged on the promise, saying, you know, hey, we're not going to do it, because so many reasons, right? Because, oh, it's, like, it's our bread and butter, or whatever, you know, whatever reasons. We didn't want to make Central open source. And then that was the source of the, some of the fights. And then, essentially, we built Fabric Cloud, and for three years, we did not ask this question. You know? like, we're like, OK, now it's a different tool. But then, uh, roughly a month ago or so, we decided to release Fabric Cloud as AGPL 3.0. So Fabric Cloud is not open source. Open source. <laughs> and it is not the open core crap, right? Not like, you know, just because some some shell scripts are public, you know. Uh, it's basically, you can, uh, given, you know, given you have some, some know-how, you can set up your own instance of Fabric Cloud and run the exact same copy. And we've already seen some sites coming up uh, with you know, different logos and different styling and everything. And so basically, everything, everything that Fabric Cloud does, like even Marketplace and SaaS and payments, everything is built in. Like, and, and even the features we're going to push now and in the future will be uh, released with the same license. No open core crap. So the biggest reason, right, why open source was basically on our website, like Frappe website. This is what it reads, you know. So basically, it says, you know, we are Frappe, and we build open source software. And you know, it is true, you know, 99% like of our products are open source by default, right? But then somehow Frappe Cloud had different rules, right? Because it was made for the specific purpose of making money. And then essentially, we had this, you know. Unwritten exception, saying, "Hey, uh, well, you know, remember what we said. You know, forget about that for this particular case." And see, it is like very fun, fun and games, as long as you are not the person who is, you know, reneging on the promise. Because essentially, I am the person who, who's working on Traffic Cloud. Every time I looked at the website, you know, this kind of, you know, bit me, and and I decided to give in eventually. So that is the that is the biggest reason. And then I can you know, always go back and justify and say, you know, hey, every time I look at some cool piece of software, you know, uh, it never comes to my mind saying, you know, hey, it would have been so much cooler if this was proprietary. Never comes to me, right? But the other thing comes, right? You look at some proprietary piece of software and you're like, okay, it would have been so much cool to look how this works, you know, or have it for free, or something like that, right? But the other, other way is not to. And again, you know, Vishal is saying the same thing, which is, you know, free. Uh, and again, you know, you can go with moral, moral philosophy, saying, you know, hey, you know, what is the right thing to do, you know? But again, this is post fact, right? The biggest reason is for me because I did not want to do the wrong thing. So that makes our company 100% open source, right? And <laughs> again, you know, you might say, you know, what is the difference between like 95% open source and 100% open source, you know? And like for most part, there isn't much difference, but now at least I can very proudly say, you know, hey, like, we don't compromise on our principles. Like, no matter how stupid they think, how stupid the principles seem to you, like, we don't compromise on them because we set them. And, and yes, you know, people sometimes do call us batshit crazy, and, and they are right for most part, but, you know, at least we don't compromise on our principles. And then, again, you know, it is not just my decision. I, I talk to other, I mean, everyone in the company. And people were roughly equally split between pro open source, you know, I don't care, and no, how dare you? But eventually, all the arguments were simple, right? You know, what if we lose revenue because of this decision? Nothing else, right? Everything else goes right, but because you released the software as open source, now you might have competitors. You might uh, give, you know, competitors that would never have been undue advantage. And I mean, of course, you can answer that question. 
saying, you know, what if you know, it, it would go the other way? Right? What if it turns out to be a good distribution channel? But then eventually we did not, did not even want to argue that question, saying, like, that is not what is important. What is important is, you know, like, are you making principal decision, not some outcome-based thinking. Like, whether you become, like, a huge open source product or not is irrelevant. Right? Your principles are what is relevant. So, again, you know, preaching to the choir for most part here, but maybe, maybe set your software free. And so, yeah, so you can go on GitHub now. And folk, it is very hard to set up the, uh, set it up, but trust me, it works, it, uh, it works, and I can set you, I can see, see, set in front of you, and without any cheating, without any special command, set, up, set it up for you, but uh, the source code is public with AJPL 3.0 without any, uh, any restrictions. And again, you know, I get to claim a lot of glory here, right? Because everybody's like, hey, you know, Aditya made Fabric Cloud and, and things like that. And yes, you know, I've been doing Fabric Cloud for three years, but like, you know, for instance, without Faris, our co-founder, like who eventually left to create something else, and you know, for the lack of better term, or my Bob Sarkar, like this wouldn't have been possible. And then Balu joined, and Balu does operation operations, you know, operational engineering for Fabric Cloud. And I could not be sitting in front of you, you know, being relaxed and giving this talk if he does not do what he does. And then, you know, Hussein does all of our like superstar work and you just listen to him today morning. And then, so some of, our, some of the members moved on to other projects, but Utrik is still with us, and all of the SaaS, SaaS projects that, you know, that are showing off as, hey, you know, go here and sign up. Essentially, he's working day and night to make that possible. And I, you know, none of this is possible without any of these members. <laughs> and, Again, you know, like everyone else helps, and again, none of that is possible. But you know, these people needed some some calling out. That's all, all I'm doing. And I don't know. So most of the magic that we have built, like yes, you know, we do the hard work, but none of this would have been possible without our first customers. You know, which were partners for most. Like 99% of our first customers were partners. And most of them decided to stick with us, you know. And, and then we can be hard to deal with sometimes. Not the company, you know, the Fabric Cloud team, uh, with our like, constant downtimes and uh, support escalations and whatever you call it. And you might not be happy with it. But I'm glad that you're with us. And we are going because of you. And then even non partner customers, you know, who are here for other agendas, but are essentially helping us you know, grow. None of this would have been possible without you. So thank you, and thank you for your precious time, and thank you for listening to me. <laughs>